Hello students, in this video we'll prove that continuous functions on a closed interval are Riemann integrable. So let f be a continuous function on the closed interval a, b. Since it's continuous on a closed interval a, b, it's automatically bounded since a, b is a, con a, b closed is a compact set. That's important to realize, so it's automatically bounded, right? So this automatically implies bounded. That f is bounded, which is a necessary condition for our definition of Riemann integral. Then f is Riemann integral. So what we need to do is then you construct a partition. So here's the idea. So what can we say? So I want to find a partition such that the upper sum on that partition minus the lower sum on that partition can be arbitrarily small. So let's let epsilon be greater than zero. Since f is continuous on a, b, it is also uniformly continuous. That's important, right? We know that continuous functions on compact sets are also uniformly continuous. And therefore, what can we say? Since it's uniformly continuous, that's great for us. Therefore, there exists a delta. There is delta greater than zero, such that if x minus y is less than delta, I can make f of x minus f of y less than epsilon. This implies that f of x minus f of y can be made arbitrarily small in terms of epsilon. What I'll do is I'll make it less than epsilon over b minus a. And we'll see why that choice of b minus a in the denominator comes up later, okay? But this is the definition of uniform continuity. If I give you an epsilon, I can find a delta such that the difference of f of x and f of y is less than something in terms of epsilon, that as long as it's a single function of epsilon, epsilon times a constant, as long as x minus y is less than delta. That's by uniform continuity. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a partition of a, b such that the maximum difference between any two points in the partition is less than this delta, right? So now pick a partition, choose a partition, of a, b, such that, and let's call that partition P, which will be x0, x1, x2, up to xn, which you know x0 is A, xn is B, such that the largest differential between any two points in the partition, such that the maximum of xj minus xj minus 1 is less than delta. And that's always possible, right? I can just add more and more and more and more and more and more and more points to my partition. I can just keep adding points to the partition until the maximum difference between any two points in the partition is within delta of each other. I can just add, make the partition finer and finer and finer and finer until I achieve this, okay? And that actually just follows from the Archimedean, property, uh, Archimedean principle if you want to prove that formally. Good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate the difference in the upper and lower sums over this partition. So let me consider u, f, p. And of course, this partition is going to have to depend on this delta, which depends on epsilon, obviously, right? So u, f, p minus l, f, p. Let's write what this is, sort of formally. It's the sum, j goes from 1 up to n. Then I'm going to have to measure the difference between the supremum over xj minus 1 and xj of f minus the infimum over xj minus 1 xj of f. That's called the oscillation of the function over the interval xj minus 1 to xj, so that has a fancy name called oscillation. And then times the differential xj, xj minus 1. Now what can I say? I know that for any j, I can find, so I know that there exists for any j, let's say yj and zj, such that this supremum is attained at a point f of what? f of, let's say the, the supremum is attained at f of yj, and the infimum is attained 
at f of zj. These points exist because this interval over here, xj minus 1 to xj, is compact. And I know that on a compact set, a continuous function attains both its infimum and its supremum. Now, these points, xj and yj, reside where? These points reside in xj minus 1 to xj, and the length of that interval is what? The length of the interval xj to xj minus 1 is no more than delta. So I have f of yj minus f of zj. I know that that has to be less than epsilon over b minus a because the points xj, because the points yj and zj are within delta of each other because they're within that interval, and the interval that, that interval xj to xj minus 1 is length delta. So over here, we have what? There's xj. There's xj minus 1. Maybe over here, there's where yj resides. And maybe over here, that's where zj resides. They're within an interval of length delta. Therefore, they themselves must be within delta of each other. So I can estimate this sum now in the following way. I can estimate this by this saying that this is less than the sum j goes from 1 up to n of epsilon over b minus a, and then xj minus xj minus 1, and of course this is going to be epsilon over b minus a, and this is a telescopic sum. It telescopes to xn minus x0 by the telescopic sum properties. And of course xn we know is what? We know that xn is b, we know that x0 is a, so the b minus a cancels, and this is what? Less than epsilon. So I've just shown that ufp minus lfp is less than epsilon. So for every epsilon, I was able to construct a partition such that ufp minus lfp is less than epsilon, and that proves that f is Riemann integrable. And this implies that f is Riemann integrable, and therefore every continuous function on the closed interval a, b is Riemann integrable. Thank you very much.